Whew. So good. Um, what's going on, y'all? It's your boy Sid Fleeks, and welcome back to my channel again. If you're new here, this is the place where I get ghetto, I have fun, I like to talk my talk, and I like to do a little kiki and a good laugh. Well, kiki and laugh is the same thing, but you know what I mean, y'all. What's up? You know, what's up with it? It's your boy Sid Fleeks in the building. What's going on? <laughs> But no, if you're new here, make sure you comment, like, subscribe, share it with your cousin, your mama, your uncle, all of that. But we're gonna get this, get uh but we gonna get into some things today. Being in your 20s as an adult is hard. Like, I mean, like being on your own, no matter if you're 20 to 20 to 27, being in your 20s is hard. The amount of stuff that we have experienced as within the last three, four years have been traumatic traumatic. <laughs> have been traumatic in its own is in its own ways. COVID, um, the inflation and rent and stuff just skyrocketing through the roof, eggs being ten dollars. This is not giving white picket defense. It's giving very much the hood, very much ghetto, very much country though, country and ghetto at the same time. I'm not really I'm not really fooling it with it, okay? And it's also very weird being that we're in a very political uprising climate right now with the stuff that's going on with Russia and all these other things that's going on, them finding UFOs and all type of stuff. And that's just, you know, going deeper in it. But we can say on the surface level, being in your 20s is really hard. Like oftentimes we just feel, I will, I, me personally and a lot of my friends in my age group, we just feel lost. Like sometimes we just feel like, I don't know what I'm doing, we're making it up as we go. But I think that's the whole point of adulthood. But it's just different when you're this young because you want to experience life and you want to live to live and not live to survive. But it's kind of hard because at this point, you kind of, you got to find like a, a good balance of both unless you're making just buku money and, and the price don't, don't mean nothing to you. Then you know, you, girl, you good, baby. You good. I mean, of course you probably got your own problems, but like, you ain't got the power with me, God. Now, I will say over the last two years, I made a lot of mistakes, a lot of trial and run. If I would, if I can go back and do it over, I would have stayed with my internship that I had in 2021 um, and just worked through that all the way up until it became a career. The only problem was, <sighs> okay, let's talk back to, let's go back to the beginning before I get into that. I graduated college with the mindset that I wasn't going to get a corporate job. Now, the reason why I wasn't, I wasn't leaning towards that way was because I had already had my idea of what success looked like to me. And I was getting a lot of gigs for the entertainment world. I worked in entertainment and PR. I worked in PR, entertainment and music PR, right? So I was getting a lot of gigs. I was working movie screenings. I was helping artists. I was doing all type of things that aligned with what I wanted to do and that was in my career. Now, this happened right before the pandemic. I mean, like literally, my last gig that I had was in like January of 2020 and I graduated in May of 2020. In between that, Miss Coronavirus came and she shut all this shit down. So there was an opportunity for me to really, you know, continue on with doing what the, the amazing things that I was doing, right? So after, you know, the COVID relief fund and stuff, and all of that stuff went out the window and it was done, um, I realized I need a job. Now, of course, going back to the old me, I didn't want to get a job because that was never on my mind. But I'm not going to make it seem like I just wasn't prepared because I did go on interviews and stuff like that. It just, that wasn't where I was at. Like, I knew that I was going to be successful without that, right? Got me a little part-time job and I was, you know, doing fairly good or whatever. And I met my friends and stuff like that. And then um, I had got an internship in December at a PR firm working in the spirits industry. Now, I really, really liked it. It was cool. The only thing about it was I worked with a lot of passive aggressive, passive aggressive, you know, folks. And it was just very, very, very uncomfortable. And there were a lot of great ones there that I loved, that we had a great time, a great, let me say, when I say once, there were a lot of great people there that I actually enjoyed and I would love to have a friendship with today. But, um, Oh, I wouldn't mind having a friendship unless I would love, but I, would, I wouldn't mind having a friendship. But it just wasn't the right environment at the time. And I just also kind of took it for granted because it was a work from home job. Um, it wasn't paying that much with an internship, but if I was smart, I probably could have just 
worked there a little bit longer and then moved up that chain to go into a department that I already wanted to go into. But that's not the here nor there. I ended up taking a full-time job with Amazon in the midst of me having an internship. And it was just like, yeah, that was the worst decision of my life. Now, granted, I was blessed and able, I was blessed and I'm grateful for the experiences that I had through Amazon. But if I can go back and do it over again, I would never work for that company. Mm -mm, I'm sorry, not, mm -mm. I, only part of that company that I probably would still go back to or would wanna go to is Amazon Music, which I tried and it's like, oh my gosh, you're so amazed, you got all the credentials, but we don't wanna hire you. So yeah, I say all that to say that I should have stayed with my first mind and never got a corporate job. That was my biggest mistake and that was my biggest lesson that I learned. I should have stayed true to my creativity and just create it full time like I'm doing now. And who knows where I'd be from two years ago. Well, yeah, two years ago up until now. Like if I would have just been hard body with my dreams and I wouldn't even have to be worrying about this or even having this conversation. But it's a reason for that. I have more experience under my belt and I can talk about real life things that made me reconsider some of the, the decisions that I made in the past. And promise you, baby, I'm a person once I learned my lesson, honey, I ain't gonna do it again. I ain't gonna do it again. You tell me the stove pot and I touch it and it's still hot, but guess what? I won't touch it again ever, even if it's off. I wouldn't want them hard head children, honey. I also wish I would've been a little bit more open-minded in my earlier years. Like I'm 25 right now, I'm making this seem like I'm just super old. But looking back, I wish I would've been more open-minded to a lot of different things. I let like my background, the way that I was taught, um, shape my view on certain things. And I don't think I was open-minded, but I just was so close-minded to things that I just had no, I just didn't know. I was very ignorant to a lot of things. I didn't like, act ignorant i just was like mm, I'm, I'm okay on that you know but i should have tried some of those things and actually went out there and took those risks because you never know what can come from things when you're going out there and just having having a taking a leap of faith and that was something that i lacked um i was scared i was i'm so used to taking calculated risks that i was like afraid of just taking regular risks you know i feel like where i am now baby give me a risk i'm gonna take it by the way but Looking back, that's something that I really wish I would've did more of. Going out there and making that drive to Atlanta, going out there and making that drive or getting on that flight to LA and going to different events and just networking my butt off instead of sitting up here and going out with my friends a weekend trying to figure out what I'm doing in my life, you know? But we had those periods and I, I know what to do now, right? So that was one thing that I really feel like I could have done way, way, way better. And the biggest mistake of them all was not giving myself grace. I was extremely hard on myself to the point to where like it would put me in, I won't say a depression, but it would put me in a very deep, you know, pessimistic state about myself. And it was just very hard to come out of. Like it really like discouraged me in so many different ways. It affected my creativity. It affected my workflow. It affected my work ethic. So I just felt like I was down in myself in all of those moments because I was not giving myself grace. And the lesson that I learned from that is you are going at your own pace. Comparison is a thief of joy. And everything that's meant for you will truly happen for you and in its own time not on your time baby because we are never on your time we always are praying on the lord's time honey never yours baby everything is going to happen to you when you're ready and that's something that i had to that's a hard pill that i had to swallow because although i hate when the old folks say we that microwave um generation we want everything to happen so fast but that's the truth it is the truth because I'm used to seeing results. Like if I don't see the results that I that I need, especially after me, I plan, I'm so calculated in every aspect of my life. And that could be a good or a bad thing, more so than none. But when I'm planning something for like a project or an idea that I have and it doesn't give me the results that I um design that I that I desire, then I used to be, I used to feel defeated. Like, girl, I'm just, I'm a loser. I'm a sore. Like, I just, I'm, I'm never going to amount to much. And I had to stop doing that. You know, it was a lot of things that I was just very, very terrible to myself about. But, you know, that's a mistake that I've learned a big lesson from. And I will never, ever go down that road again. Throughout my 20s, I have realized the importance of mentorship. Now, I never had a mentor. I'm open to having one. But I've had, like, different 
life lessons through like people who are close to me. So I guess it's kind of like mentorship, but I really would need, I really would want, or I really, yeah, I really want a mentor that's actually like within my field or close enough to my field that can give me like good critiques and good advice to actually really, 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 really help me, right? But anyways, um, I realized that during this age group, this is a time where you do a lot of trial and errors and those conversations and those mentoring moments are very, very necessary because, you know, we, we go through life thinking that we know it all because we're either we're so smart or we have these type of different experiences and we come from these different backgrounds, but you don't know it all. Um, I had to learn that, that I, mentorship is extremely important and I think it's very necessary, especially within your early years, because we just need some type of foundation and some type of figure to look up rather look up to it, whether if it's a female whether if it's a male somebody to keep you on track and really help you and just guide you in every which way and i think that was my biggest problem because i've never really had a mentor i feel like people have always looked up to me and called me a mentor um but i don't i don't have nobody else that i can really like fill that glass from i feel like i've had had them but we're so distant um, now in my life that I'm a whole new person from who I once was and I look at life like a pitcher like a like a, a glass pitcher if I'm pouring my pitcher into somebody else which I constantly do because I believe in giving back if I'm pouring my pitcher into somebody else who's there to refill me besides life experiences and some of these things could be prevented from me having those experiences if I had somebody else pouring back into me right right and then also, you know, the biggest thing that I realized as to why our 20s are hard is because we compare so much. But it makes sense because we consume media so differently than we did in uh, be prior to the pandemic. Like everything is everything was in our face, but now it's really in our face because we had uh, the whole world had enough time to just sit down, be at home, and see how much stuff is going on in the world—the good, bad, the beautiful, and the ugly. Okay, and we in this generation or in our age group comparisons are so easy to happen we see somebody our age and they have this and they have that and it's like oh my gosh i can do that too or i can do that or i can do this and it's not a bad thing it's just like comparison again can be the thief of joy and i find that to be so common amongst our age group because it just certain things seem desirable and certain things seems like we can attain not saying that we can't but like there's a there's a such thing as trying to keep up with the Joneses, and you don't. I don't. I don't want to be in that space. I don't feel like I've ever fully just been. Oh, they got this. I need to get this too. But I have been seen. I have been to the pace. Well, I guess it is the same thing. I have been in the place where I compared myself career wise to other people, and I realized they're where they are because that's where they're supposed to be. I'm where I am because that's where I'm supposed to be. Our journeys are very totally different. So. I had to learn that comparisons is not, it's not the way to go about it. You know, you see somebody, and not, and that doesn't mean that I wasn't happy for the people that I was comparing myself to. It just was like a parallel, like, oh my gosh, look at my life and look at theirs. There's no telling, like, there, you don't know who they knew, you don't know how long they've been working on this to get to this. Like, everybody's breakthrough and moments are just totally different. So, you know, you're doing yourself a disservice if you're constantly comparing yourself to somebody um that you see a snippet of on social media and not even just social media people in your own circle or people that you can talk to like comparisons just need to be rated of in regard of like measurement of success because mm, that's just not it's not healthy for you at all and it can be very 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 discouraging and nobody want that like that that feeling is not she's not cute now, this year, I plan on being very intentional because I'm 25, baby, and I don't want my 20s to be super, super hard for the remainder of my 20s. I got five more years. To, I got five more years in my 20s. That's quite ghetto, quite crazy. But I don't want the remainder of my five years to be like, you know, trial and lessons and errors. And granted, that's inevitable, but I feel like there are certain things that I can do to help prevent that. So I'm doing the groundwork and the foundation work within on myself right now because I need, I gotta, I'm working on me. I'm working on me. I'm assessing what makes me happy, 
what makes me sad, looking at all my triggers, and I'm working on those. I'm also making sure that this year, I'm not just making little, I'm not just doing little tags just to do them. I'm doing tags that are intentional. I'm not working, I'm no longer working aimlessly. I think I was doing that for so long in the past, and that's why I always hit a hard rock and figuring out like, what am I supposed to do after this? But it's because, Work with a goal in mind, even if that is like a tiny goal each day, that's fine. Start with that and then it will build on something bigger that's for the bigger picture, right? So that's where I'm at with it right now. And I just feel like I want to be in a space where I can really create the success that I want um, for myself within my 20s, um, before I'm 30. Um, or at least the foundation and touch it and then throughout my 20s, throughout my 30s, flourish but who knows something could happen overnight or in the next year if you just be consistent so my biggest thing is that like i am setting myself up for a very impactful grateful uh glory to god career in life like i just i want to be happy and i want to experience things that i know that i that i can do so that's kind of where i'm at with it but all of that and all in all I've used, I've utilized those experiences and the things that I've been through to help formulate where I'm gonna go in the future, but I can utilize all of those experiences to say, or I can reference all of those experiences to say that being in your 20s are hard. Being in your 20s will have a lot of ups, a lot of downs, and um, if you're just if you're watching this and you're just now getting in your 20s, this is not a video to discourage you. This is a video to say like, had I would have known or um, knowing what I know now type of thing because there are a lot of things I probably would have did differently. But also, again, my story is my story and this is how it was supposed to be written, right? But I'm not going to sugarcoat and say that your 20s are going to be e going to be easy. Now, your 20s are also going to be some of your funnest and just joyful years because, you know, for the most part, the only thing you really got to worry about is bills unless you got kids. But even bills can become taxing. Just be smart about your decisions, about your money, the company you keep around you, and make the best decisions that you see fit for not just this moment, but how it's going to affect you a week from now or even the next day. Um, and I'm not saying to always think in the future because it is good to be in the present, but we're young adults now, so we gotta we kind of gotta have a good amount of both. Like we're not in a space where we can just rely on everybody else, or we can be extremely dependent. Like for the most part, you're walking into independency, and you have to be like an adult, and that's hard because there's no rule book to being an adult. We go from being te kids to teenagers to okay, go out there in the real world, and there's no rule book and no manual. Now, granted, this has been how it is since the days of time. But, and everybody's situation is different, you know. Some people have generational wealth, which I commend y'all on that. I want that for my family. But, you know, everybody's story is different. But for the most part, we walk out of there and we walk out of, you know, high school and you just jump right into the real world. Even in college, you get a taste of kind of what the real world is. But that's different because you have that cushion. You're in college. A lot of things are excused. Hell, college kids get discounts for everything. And trust me, I know because I was a college student, baby. But... Yeah, I really hope y'all enjoyed this video and I cannot wait to send y'all some more, send y'all some more, share y'all some more and really get into my life experiences and just my perspective on certain things. So I'm glad y'all watched this video. Make sure you comment, like, subscribe, send it to your mama, cousin, your brother, your sister, your uncle, and your dog. And we're going to be up in here every week. So make sure you tuned in and come back. It's your boy, Sid Flakes.